Casey Back at Bat by Dan Goodman. Paintings by Steve Johnson and Lou Fancher. Casey Back at Bat. I'm sure you've heard of Casey, the baseball world sensation, whose famous strikeout lost a game and stunned a hopeful nation. Well, if you think that tale was sad, sit down, let's have a chat, and I'll tell you all a story I called Casey Back at Bat. Twas the last game of the season, with Mudville tied for first. The players fought all summer for a pennant they did thirst. But Rutland shared the lead as well. The teams stood face to face. To the victor, fame and fortune. To the loser, second place. With Mudville down three runs to one, it was the final inning. Two men were on, but two were out. There seemed no hope of winning. Yet they would not surrender. Their motto, never quit. Mighty Casey grabbed his bat. It was his turn to hit. His arms, his legs, his neck, his lips, his teeth had muscles too. They rippled from his little toe up to his eyes of blue. He sneered, he snarled at Mudville's foes, then threw his, the fans a smirk. Some ladies found him handsome. Some thought he was a jerk. The pitcher hurled his fastball, a perfect strike, and then a fan yelled out, Hey, Casey, are you gonna whiff again? The runners took their places. Once more, the pitcher threw. He nipped the outside corner. The umpire cried, Strike! Again the pitcher gripped the ball and gave a forceful fling. Casey brought his bat back and decided he would swing. He swung so hard it sliced the air. It echoed, then it cracked. When much to everyone's surprise, the ball our hero whacked. That shot might go 500 feet, one bleacher creature reckoned. I showed him, cackled Casey as he rounded first and second. The Mudville fans began to cheer, a roar that started growing as they watched the ball go o'er the wall, and then it kept on going. It soared by hills and valleys, ever higher in the sky, past houses, farms, and villages. So swiftly did it fly. It crossed the great Atlantic, where it almost struck a bird. But Casey didn't have a clue, for he was rounding third. In Italy, an artist thought he'd made his masterpiece with a painting of a tower and some flowers and some geese. He had to start all over when the baseball changed the scene. And this, you see, shows perfectly why leaning towers lean. In Egypt, three small children were engaged in some hijinks when a baseball zipping past them knocked the nose right off the sphinx. It ricocheted to where they played and almost hit those kids. But instead, it zoomed right by them and straight up the pyramids. In India, two rhinos who were lolling in a pond looked up and saw the baseball flying across the great beyond. They ate their lunch and snorted, taking time to smack their lips. They hardly seemed to notice. Up until the big eclipse. It flew so fast, it raced through time, some 60 million years, to when T-Rex and the Stegosaurus roamed the hemispheres. The creatures were quite terrified, 
So underground they slinked. And now you know how dinosaurs, in fact, became extinct. In the depths of outer space, an astronaut named Janet shrieked, Eureka! I have found it! I've discovered a new planet! Her par partner took a look and told her, Janet, in your dreams, I've yet to see a planet sewn together at the seams. Meanwhile, back in Mudville, total strangers hugged and kissed, Casey crossed the plate and told reporters, it's all in the wrists. He hadn't been this happy since the moment of his birth. But from the upper atmosphere, the ball returned to Earth. <gasps> now Dunn, the center fielder, had already left the ground. And Neft and White in left and right were chatting on the round. But Mo, the little shortstop, saw a streak come from above. He raised his arm in self-defense. The ball plopped in his glove. Oh, somewhere in this crazy world, some kids are having fun. Some are telling knock-knock jokes. Some skateboard in the sun. And some more kids eat hot dogs piled up high with sauerkraut. But there's still no joy in Mudville. Hard luck Casey has flied out.